Okay, cool. So what actually goes out pretty soon is the uh, generator 1.6. So generate the PMP generator generator SPF 1.6. And uh, I started right before the call uh, the PR for 1.6. So after the meeting, I will publish it. <clears throat> and all the tests have been passed. So nothing is in the way right now. So what actually when you when you start a new project now? And let me go over here to start a new project and make the screen a little bit bigger and say yo at pmp slash spfx. <clears throat> then in this case it still states it's step at the three, but it's not a, because that's uh, my version that I have installed and I haven't published it yet. So you have the handlebars uh, web uh, generator, you have the root.js generator, Angular elements is still in here. You have now the enhanced SPFX generators, the React.js, Knockout, and No Framework, but you don't have the default ones anymore because I will explain it in a bit why these enhanced SPFX generators in here. And now let me try uh, start a new React.js project. So we have now the same thing that it was in, in the previous version as well. So you can directly include jQuery. You can directly include uh, PMPJS. The property controls you can actually use in all the projects that you can create with SPFX. But the reusable controls are just specific for the React.js projects. The, the property controls, because the sidebar that you actually get in 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 in, in the SPFX project on, the, on your web part is actually already React JS control, so you can inject them in there. So jQuery, which version do you want to have? 3.0, and then you get some new options for webbing your code. So one thing is the the Webpack Bundle Analyzer that helps you to identify where you have uh, small libraries, uh, big libraries in there that actually blow up your your uh, package. And you also have in here a new option, which is a style linter that helps you to uh, lint your or evaluate if everything is uh, correct, syntactically correct in your CSS styles. And for React.js projects, what we also have in here, we already create in there a test framework which is chest, uh, which uh, is heavily used by uh, Elio Striff or Andrew Connell actually wrote a blog post about this. And we directly include this in any new pro every new project that we create. So now we this is the default React SPFX generator that you have in here. So it asks you for a solution name. In my case, I just used the demo 160. I want to build a solution for the SharePoint Online and the latest version. I use the current folder. I don't want to deploy it as a tenant admin. I just want to create the web part. And what is in the web part name? Yeah, hello world, description, and then it's done. Okay, so now it creates your project. Let me open up another and open the code in here. Because there are some things that are changed in here. So first of all, for, from the style LinkedIn, you see the style linter configuration in here, which is a new file that we deploy when we install the style linter. And what you also get in the gulp file, you get here a lot of more tasks, which we have in here the Webpack Pundle Analyzer, which is documented in a, a, in a, a on docs.microsoft.com, how you actually implement this in your uh, generator uh, uh, to your project, but we do this already for you. Another gap test that we have in here is the style inter definition that creates a subtask whenever you build your project and uh, uh, tries to find some, some issues maybe in your CSS. So these are the two that we have in here, and if once the project has been created successfully, then you have some new references in here, the package JSON, which actually installs the um, Just framework with the preset, actually what you need to have. When you use Just, you always need to target to a specific React version, and this is 
now targeted to uh, React 16 because I said in my project I want to create a new SharePoint Online project that has the React 16 library included. And so you get everything ready to testing. For the chest testing, actually, you have to deploy some additional files that we also do for you. So whenever you want to change your chest configuration, you have here chest.config.json file, which is actually where is your root directory for your source code and which preset, preset that it should be used. There is, uh, in an upcoming uh, SIG call, uh, actually, Andrew Connell explains a little bit more about the chest integration and how we do the start, uh, how we can unit test your, your generator. So let's run the project then. So I'm now in the demo. Yes, that's okay. Gulp serve. Then see there's an action. So it starts up my workbench. And what you actually see in here, that we already have some linting issues in here. The unexpected, let's move over to our source code file. When we have in the source code, we have inside there the module.css. So we can now identify where these issues are. So, so in line 614, we actually have a zero and with px, we can remove this safely because we actually, when, when you have a zero unit, you don't need to have a unit next to it uh, and it saves some coding, uh, some, some bits in, in your code, in your style code. And now we do it again. So we have an empty, you see the, what we have in here. So we have here, we should have spaces in between. Now, when I compile it again, we're getting lesser and lesser. And now I reformat this document. And then I should have just only one empty line before declaration, it says. And this is on line 13. That is because we have here some says includes. And to read it uh, for, for better reading, you should actually have the at includes and the other CSS code separated from each other. Once we save our file again, we actually have now the style into message here. So it linted our code and everything is, is, is fine now from, from this perspective. So we actually fixed uh, all the issues that we have in here. Other things, for example, that you have might have or to, to keep your CSS consistent when you have something like this color hash FF save it, then it says, hey, in, in the in the config, base configuration, this defined that all the values for colors should have only lowercase ca uh, characters. Okay, and there, there are a lot of definitions on this. Uh, you'll find more on this on the Stalin.io website. So they actually, they have 160 build rules that you can check and support for different frameworks and defines uh, so support for different um, um, uh, favors, how you write your CSS that you, you can include afterwards. Uh, but the style link there for the uh, SPFX is already included in here. So for the uh, Webpack bundle analyzer, what I need to move over to the temp folder. And what we have in here, there's a new folder that only appears when I have uh, the Webpack bundle analyzer. So we directly write the result with every build to the temp folder in the stats folder. So we have in here the demo 16.stats.html. And when I open up my workbench and say in here, let's instead of temp stats, then it was demos 160.html, I guess, or I'm wrong. No, stats.html. That's what I'm missing. You see all the results from, so the index, uh, uh, index.js actually has 13.23 uh, kilobytes, 
4.6 kilobytes is what uh, this JavaScript file takes, the CSS loader 2.1. And if you have uh, things like moment uh, chess or jQuery included in here, you will also see this in the result. Uh, and you can then uh, identify these these uh, these pieces in your code and, and try to optimize them before you actually ship your package. Yeah, this this was the the two um, two main up or three main updates that we have now in 1.6. From the coding perspective, or from from the extending perspective, so we have now a problem, be, or or a, we had a challenge in 1.6 because what you actually do there uh, when when you create a, a ReactJS project, then you already get a Gulp file from your uh, from from the default generator, and we actually need to inject our code for Webpacker, uh, bundle analyzer for style linting directly in the, inside the Gulp file. And what we actually did in the in the Yeoman generator, we have here in the app with just the main generator, then we have the template files where all the template files that we deploy are, and we have here style linting, which is actually is just the Gulp task that we inject in our Gulp file just for the style linting. We have the Webpack bundle analyzer, which is only the code uh, that we inject in the Gulp file in case you selected the Webpack bundle analyzer. And this is the actual default Gulp file and what we inject in here. So we have here our checks. When you actually selected the PMP vetting and selected Webpack bundle analyzer, then it pushes it to the Gulp task and down here. So basically what you've chosen from the, uh, from the project generator creation will be automatically injected here at the custom tasks are those tasks that then will be added later. For example, when you, when you select a uh, handlebars template, a Vue.js template, uh, these will be automatically injected also in this Gulp file and ended then in your project file, uh, Gulp file in here. So yeah. in case you have, yeah, sorry. No, no, please, no please, please close the case and, and then let's have a quick chat on this. Yeah, in, so in, in case if you have some Gulp tasks that think are beneficial for all the people, please, you can share the, those with us. For example, some DevOps task or whatever you think or using in your development and you think it's a valid option for the generator. So uh, uh, we are really willing to, to see what, what, with what are you actually working for. And uh, if you want to have this, then please open up a GitHub issue and then we uh, can check how, how we actually integrate this in, in the generator pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, and no, because... No. Just, Stefan, just just one, day. Okay. Yep. 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 Just one big thing for the future, because the options there are getting more and more. We're actually looking into a way to save, let's say, you our default configuration as a template. So we, when you start a new project, you actually can use this template to create a new project. Now that's a, that's yeah. actually really cool stuff uh, in the future as well. Now the the stuff that you showed related on the the Yeoman generator inside of the Yeoman generator. Just to be clear on the on the new people because there's quite a new uh, quite again a new amount of new people in the here without any previous knowledge on SPFX. This isn't what you need to actually know. Uh, uh, the the stuff that Stefan showed inside of the uh, SPFX BMP generator is for those people who actually want to contribute on the generator and that will be a relatively small amount of people. Yeah. Right, Stefan? So yeah. the number one thing when I think people should be uh, getting out of this one is that um, the BMP SPFX generator, first of all, it extends the out of the box generator. It extends the, the engineering provider generator, 100% supported by SharePoint engineering, which is us on Microsoft side. And this one extends that by having then an open source layer on top of it. Um, and uh, using the uh, Stefan's uh, generator, and uh, not Stefan's generator, the community generator, let's call it community generator. Stefan has been leading the effort to. Um, you can actually then get more ready to use development experience in the solutions. Now, Stefan, if you don't mind, uh, for those who are not yet quite familiar with this one, can you actually execute the generator just in a console application? And, and let's see, the slightly one more time, slowly, what are the different options which are available? Yeah, just sure. Recap. MK, dear demo. 
Demo gods and typing. Yeah, it's, so it's hard to type when somebody's watching. No, wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, is, is someone watching? How many? 141? <laughs> now, so just to be clear, once again, so this one, the at BMP SPFX, is not an open source version of the out of the box German generator. This one has a dependency on that. The whole point of this one is that now we as a community can individually extend the generator what we're using. So basically what you can do is always use this as your de facto generator when you gen uh, uh, produce your solutions because this one actually is using the out of the box uh, generator under the hood but it's offering decorated additional capabilities on top of it. So um, and like I said I think the number one of us the, the big thing here which people are always asking uh, well, it's based on 1.71, which is an important thing, uh, and uh, Angular Element support is here, so you can actually, uh, it creates nicely the Angular Element solution. I think Pavel was on the call at least yeah, at some point, uh, so I kind of helped on contributing on that one. Uh, and there's enhanced SPFX uh, knockout and and, and uh, uh, JavaScript uh, projects, and that means if you do the enhanced uh, React.js, which is probably quite widely used as well, it is using the out of the box once again, out of the box generate under the hood. But if you select that one, Stefan, yes. uh, these options are the decorated ones. So basically now you're able to then add additional projects and dependencies automatically to the solution um, as a default starting point. Uh, so why wouldn't you use BMP property controls? Because they actually re uh, reduce the development costs for your team. It makes a lot of sense to use them. Uh, or the BMP reusable controls uh, if you're using a React-based uh, component. So you can get all of that dependency inside of the solution uh, immediately when you start creating the solution. So highly beneficial. Cool. Sorry, uh, Stefan. That was just for a recapping okay. on, the, on the value of the of the uh, solution for those who are not necessarily super familiar. Uh, one more time. What was the URL uh, where people can actually get uh, information on this one? Uh, it's the uh, it's on GitHub. It's on you find it on the PMP repo. Uh, it's, we have the uh, documentation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's this. Uh, I post it in the yeah. Put it in the iron window. So just for the reference for those who are looking into that. So.